What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Hustle with Jesse W. And today we're going to go over a day trading recap. And tonight at 8 p.m., we're going to be on here going over charts and Q&As and also sharing some special news with you, introducing a fellow YouTuber and our newest team member tonight live at 8 p.m. Check it out. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and jump into this recap here. Um, I took two trades, well, more than two trades. I took, uh, I think, four trades this morning, and uh, I'm green on two out of the four, green day. Uh, so it's a real nice, you know, decent little day start to the week. Just consistently, you know, putting up the green days, that's the goal. Um, I'm just a little disappointed this morning because I've been waiting for PLTR to give me an opportunity for a swing trade, and I think we're going to go over that here. Oh God, it hurts to see it keep going. It's up, it's up a dollar a share from where I saw it this morning, and I was like, ah, I wanted to pull back another fifty cents for me, and uh, it didn't do it. So that's pretty disappointing. Anyways, on um, PLTR this morning, I was uh, eyeing it for a swing trade, and you know, here's the daily. We pulled, we we made this big high up here, all the way up here to thirty three dollars and change, and then we pulled it all the way back in here. I was really ideally ideally wanting it to come all the way back down to 20 bucks before it bounced up, but it came all the way down here to $21 and change. And then today, you know, I was watching to see if we could break over this 25, uh, 50 ish area and uh, hold it and see if we can get that squeeze move over the next couple of days back up here to at least 30 bucks. Uh, you know, that's four points and a half move uh, easily there with uh, just holding 25 as the as the risk. Now, this morning, you know, it, it pushed, gapped up, pushed, pulled in, and uh, I just missed out on this here. I mean, it was such a fast dip, and it just, it never looked back. I really, I really should have considered buying it uh, where I th where I saw it, but I said, no, I'm going to wait and see if it pulls back deeper. And, you know, I've just been watching it since all of this. I've been watching it, and it just hasn't given me that retest of 25.50, and now... We're on our way to 27. Just no words, honestly. Um, so PLTR, you know, so far I have not been able to get in on that swing trade. Well, guys, before we move any further into this video, do me a quick favor. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And remember, tonight at 8 p.m., we're going to be on here YouTube live. And it's going to be, you know, kind of like a standard Q&A. We'll go over some charts. Then we're going to introduce a newest team member who is also a fellow YouTuber. He's going to be a moderator at the daytraderchatroom.com. So you're not going to want to miss that. And uh, you can come on by, ask him some questions about his trading style. He trades completely different than I do. Also, if you don't follow me on Twitter, make sure you do. Over the weekend, I was tweeting some updates about the site. We're going to be doing here now into the new year some new content uh, on real estate investing, because as you know, I like to invest in real estate. We'll be also talking about long-term stuff and uh, side hustles, because as you know, my channel's name is Hustle with Jesse W. So the chat room, the daytraderchatroom.com is going to be more than just day trading, just like my channel. We're going to be covering an onslaught of topics, just filling everything with content that you're really going to enjoy. And it's really going to help you out a lot, I think, in the long term, if you really dive into it. So I hope you guys stick around and check that out. Also, remember, there it will be a special coupon code tonight so that you can save money on the daytraderchatroom.com. And there's going to be some giveaways. So make sure to tune in. Now, I do. I did have my watch list up. I tweeted it this morning. I wasn't overly excited this morning on anything. Um, I really wasn't. I wanted to be, but I just wasn't. I thought Snow might have something here for the long side, uh, just because it wasn't shying away from this, this you know, 390, 395 area. I thought, you know, we'd probably get that break up over uh, 400, and we did uh, right at the bell. We came all the way down here, tested this 385 area, went all the way to 404, uh, and then just retraced it all. Bottom got really, really light down here. And now it's just real choppy looking chart right there on the on the three minute. On the 15 minute, you know, you can still see we're going to have that 370 down there as potential support if 380 doesn't hold. So I'll keep it. I'll keep this on the back burner uh, just because I like to keep a few stocks in the back burner like Snow and Tesla. Uh, because on days where I'm not already excited about anything else, you know, stocks like that sometimes tend to pan out. You know, they're cold stocks. Uh, people like to short them. So they, they generally have some sort of little range there. And uh, today, you know, I traded 
uh, traded Tesla. But before we jump into Tesla, OBLN was on my watch list this morning, and I was not liking it very much. I'll tell you why. Uh, in pre-market, it was selling off, as you can see here. So yesterday, well, not yesterday, Friday, and after I was shot up, started trading sideways, and then this morning, you know, it just started to fade a little bit, but out of nowhere, uh, some buying came in here. I'm sure some some chat rooms alerted or something, uh, and then shorts started to end up, you know, covering their positions uh, because, you know, it opened, it dropped down, and then just traded sideways through VWAP until finally down here, and, you know, I look at it now, and it's like, man, that's, that would have been a nice little trade there, uh, although I, I haven't been liking small caps over the last week. Uh, but yeah, it would have been a nice little trade here in front of this 9 EMA, you know, starter precision, add over VWAP, and then boom, you know, you had a real nice clean move. And I mean, this thing was a monster, went all the way to $3 and change from a low of day of $1.38. So yeah, right now it's up 109% on the day. So it's definitely something I'll keep on watch the rest of the day and uh, see what it wants to do. If it decides to hold VWAP throughout the day, uh, you know, it might have an afternoon squeeze on it. So I'll continue watching that. Oh, wow, GT. I had this one on watch, and that's one I really wanted to see make a move. And look at this. Wow, what a, like, you know, I think you understand right there just my lack of words. Like, look at this. We we have the huge gap up. And then we just, this, what is this? <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying, right? What is this? Like, okay, new low of day. New low of day. New low of day, random squeeze on up. It's not like it gave us like a, a nice double bottom lean setup, right? It just new low of day, new low of day, new low of day. Three new lows of days before it took off on big volume. Like I'd watch it now, but you know, this 950 area, uh, I'd look at that. Let's see the daily. Uh, you know, we got this double top that we have set up not right now in a sense right because look this past chart history right here shows us 1015 or 1014 uh resistance and where did we just get halted at the high of day um right here at 10 bucks so that area there could be a potential um you know if we gap up above it maybe if it holds it uh you know if it holds that area that'd be nice you know we might have a shot there if it pulls back into vwap uh, maybe, you know, a low volume. So, I mean, it's anybody's guess right now. That's, so I'm going to stay away from it. But that's just, it's a shame. It's a, it's a shame to me. 950. It's a real shame to me to see that, uh, that it did that now. But that is all right. We'll continue on going through the list here. Uh, then Tesla. Tesla was my trade. I took two trades on it this morning. One on the stock, one on the options itself. And uh, I did record the options one, but it's for my options course. Uh, but I will go over it with you here. And I did record the actual, uh, you know, trade on the shares itself as well. Let me grab those here. They should be here. I believe it's this one. I took multiple trades on it. Could have traded it much better, much better. Uh, here you'll see kind of like a, a little bit of a FOMO trade on it. And uh, I, you know, realized that I'm not comfortable and I shut it down. So I'm in 50 shares here. I thought we weren't going to pull back down here to 612. And this is really what I wanted. I want to test that VWAP, bounce off of that. And then that would be where I would get in full size. Obviously, I'm not in full size here because I knew it was a bit of a FOMO trade. So I stop out of it right there. Boom. I close it out. Just lose 29 bucks. Done, right? So then I'm back in it right here. I'm back in it right here, 100 shares. I really wanted 200 shares. Didn't get a chance to add because we just... Tap that VWAP and bounced off of it real, real hard. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm not going to get to add to it here. Uh, so it's a really quick trade. I'm in a 614.25, and uh, I'm looking for it to bust through the high and go up to 620. That's a great win for me. I'm giving up two points for the shot at making, uh, you know, like another, what is that, three points, four points almost. No, okay. it's crazy. That's six points. That's almost six points. So if I'm giving up two points for the shot at making five to six points on this. And I'm looking for it to do it now because of look at that. Look at that. Look at that bounce. Typically, when we see that kind of bounce, we see it go right through the higher day. Uh, so I'm in there 100 shares. I don't get to add to my 200 shares. And uh, I get a little concerned that we're not breaking through the high there. So I take off 50. And I say to myself, if we begin to hold that 616 area, I might add back to it. 
So I add back to it right there thinking, okay, this is going to be the candle that's going to bust us through the highs because volume is increasing. We've bounced super strong. And typically, okay, typically, we don't come back down here to retest this VWAP. We just don't typically. Typically on something like this, you just get that huge candle right through the high of day. And that's what I'm looking for. If I don't get it, I'm going to get out of the trade. And that's it for me. I'll, I'll book this little green trade. So I add back to full size there looking for that move. We don't get it. We don't get it right then and there where I thought we would. So I exit the position and take a small win on it. Uh, it's a shame, you know, because let's see here. This is that candle right here. We we eventually do break through. It comes all the way down back there, stops me out and goes right to my target, which is a shame because it would have been a huge winner. Uh, I had already booked 100 something, so I would have booked another 600 bucks there. It would have been a nice $700 winner on just 100 shares. That's a no-brainer. Then I got back in here with the options play and uh that was while i was watching palantir uh for the swing trade so i took it right there in my swing trade account so i'll show you that right quick here um let's see i took two trades on it and uh first trade starter took 127 dollars loss then i took you know full size well not really full size just two contracts i would have ideally like three or four and uh banged out a real nice winner right there uh dollar 29 uh share on those options so erased this loser and then on the second contract booked a real nice you know 147 148 bucks in winnings there on that one and then on the uh regular day trade you know right here you can see uh my first trade of the day lost 30 bucks then on the remaining uh trade that i took plus the ad that i had there when i added back to the uh full size you know i banged out another 142 bucks so right there you see it so all in all in the day, uh, up about 290 bucks, almost $300 in the day. So I'll take that. I'll show you the orders here real quick. First trade of the day, uh, just those 50 shares uh, in at 616.56 out at 615.98, small loss. Uh, got back in 100 shares, 614. Uh, 25 took 50 shares off at 616.97. So that's great right there. And then I uh, added back. 50 shares is 617.20 and took everything off at 616.10. So that gave me that $142 plus the 148 bucks on the options, you know, right there. Real nice little, you know, 290, almost $300 day. Not going to complain the least bit about that. That's a nice solid day. And uh, just continuing the consistency. That's all there is to that, right? Now, as far as the rest of the day, what does that consist of for me? I'll continue watching Tesla, uh, but I will be watching uh, Palantir a lot more. See if I can get a pullback. Man, it broke through 27 bucks. See if I can finally get a pullback that's decent enough on this so I can get in on a swing trade on this Palantir. Uh, but it looks like it might not give it to me, uh, at least not to a level where I'm comfortable. Uh, GTEC, like we said, you know, right here out of that halt, looking to see if this area holds the support. This pullback or this drop this volume is really really high and it's dropping so i'm not liking that but like i said remember that that ten dollar area would be resistance well we made it up to 1070 real nice push off of that halt but right now it's looking kind of weakish but you never know with these low floaters so i'll keep i'll definitely keep that one on watch remember tonight check in 8 p.m live stream and uh smash the like button for me subscribe to the channel if you haven't and i'll catch you on the next one